Hi guys. Uh, just want to go through how we can uh, turn the uh, GS1100 into a portable survey meter. We're all familiar with the portable survey meters from the 1950s. They basically look like a bread box with a door handle. And there's a reason for that, because it's actually quite practical when you're out in the field and you're trying to measure different types of radiation in the field. So we've come up with uh, a frame to hold the GS1100 or the GS Pro, it's simply made from uh, laser cut acrylic. We ship it out in, uh, in a flat pack. It simply assembles with four screws. I'm not going to go into how the assembly takes place because you guys are all engineers and you know how to do that anyway. So when it's uh, finished assembled, it looks like this. And it's very simple to uh, put together the uh, scintillation detector. This one here is a GS2812 simply fits underneath like this and gets held in place with uh, two velcro straps. Okay, we just pop those in like that. Back from the other one. Alright, that's our uh, scintillation detector in place. Flip it back over and uh, there we have a space inside the middle here for the GS1100 and we have some space at the front here for the USB battery. So the first thing we're going to do is put the cables in because they sit nicely alongside the GS1100 here. This is the audio cable. It goes in here with a jack plug. And we have the uh, little uh, USB power supply with a shortened USB cable. Simply pop that through here. And that sits nicely along the side there and it's held in place with a little Velcro dot. And the uh, GS1100 or the GS Pro, they're both the same size. They fit in right in the middle there, held in place. All right, so we now have the uh, GS1100 in place in the middle here. We have the USB battery at the front here. And all we need to do is uh, connect the cables at the back. USB cable goes in there. The audio cable pops in there. And then we use a short piece of uh, BNC to BNC. One goes on the detector and the other one on the GS1100. All right, and the iPhone. The iPhone simply is held in place by two rubber strips and it uh, pushes nicely into the middle there and sits firmly. And the audio plug then goes into the jack here. If I only put it the right way around, it would help. There we go, that's better. And there we go. And this little blue part hanging out here, which you might see, that's the uh, trimming for the uh, volume of the iPhone, as the GigaBot requires a little bit of adjustment to the volume. So there you go, there's your portable servo meter. You tell me, which one looks more cool? So now, setting up uh, the GS Walkabout with uh, GigaBot is uh, pretty straightforward. Your uh, USB battery powers your GS1100. Uh, just uh, simply switch it on to 700 volts, turn in your iPhone, and uh, turn on uh, Gigabot. Now if you look at Gigabot, there is in the uh, settings, there is actually a GS1100 uh, option. You can choose that, and it's pretty much going to be the right settings. The only thing which will be needed is a little bit of adjustment to the volume. So now we have uh, essentially a portable isotope identifier. It's really convenient, it's easy to carry and uh, we're getting a count rate there now. Let me just check that out. It's all set up. Mm. All right, so we're showing uh, 0.8 microsieverts an hour, which is about normal background around here. So now we can uh, now we can take this uh, portable device and we can go looking for radioactive substances, radioactive contamination. If I'm not mistaken, there's been some fallout over here, and um, if we go looking for it here, oh, we see the count rate going up quite dramatically here and I'm sure there's something here somewhere 
As you can see here, count rate's increasing quite dramatically. And sure enough, oh yes, there's a little source here from Spectrum Techniques. Lo and behold, CCM137. Now if we uh, flick across to the uh, to the spectrum here. Some of the reflection in the background. Uh, yeah, we can maybe hold it at a better angle there. Mm -hmm. We can see the CCM137 peak coming up quite nicely there. It's amazing how quickly it comes up. If we actually reset that now, you can see how quickly the uh, spectrum forms. So. You, have a, you truly have a portable isotope identifier and simply by using the uh, isotope identifier on the side here you can move your finger and you can see that we're on 662 KeV which means that what we found is cesium-137. Thanks for watching.